Do you recall what Heisenberg said about these fundamental particles, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle? It was impossible to observe an electron without disturbing either its position or its momentum. And no matter how you contrive the experiment, the product of those two uh, disturbances is the same. And this was a great, um, great discovery in 1925 or 26 when first announced, because it turned out that the disturbance of the particle was equal to the quantum of action, the same thing that Planck had discovered 25 years before. Uh, let me show you how that is. That's again, like Beret, it's too complicated for people to understand. Momentum is ML over T. That's the, the thing that's one of the things that's disturbed, and the other is, is position, which is L. So you can see by complex mathematics that that product is ML squared over T, the same as I had before. In other words, the product of the disturbance of position and, and momentum is equal to a unit of action. And that cannot be observed or can, cannot be predicted. That means that the particle is bouncing around in a small area that uh, you're completely uncertain. It, it's as though it was free to be anywhere it wanted to there. Now, remember I had animals over here. Well, what is, what is it that's characteristic of animals? If I put a mouse on the floor and came back a minute later, would he still be there? Probably not. Now, if I want to, to describe mathematically my uncertainty about the mouse, I think I can do this now. I would say there was an area over which he could be, suppose it was 10 seconds later and the maximum he can run is 10 feet per second, then I could say, well, he'll be within a 10-foot circle. So I'd have an area times the mass of the mouse in a given time, right? That would be m, mass of the mouse, l squared would be an area divided by time. So it would be the same thing, ml squared over t. In other words, the freedom of the mouse is described by the unit of action. That's my own idea, by the way. <laughs> So there's a relation between the animals and the particles. Atoms have a different kind of freedom. They can be locked in a crystal, so they have no possibility of moving around, but what is it that the atoms do that can't be predicted? Well, this Yes, right, but I was thinking of, of just radiating light because if they gave up electron, they'd become an ion and then they're not the same. But they can radiate light and still retain their integrity, as it were. I call it, for the particles, it's freedom of motion, but for the atoms, it's freedom of speech because they can give up this different frequencies. It's almost music. Uh, and the, uh, what, what I need about this is that it has only one dimension. That is, the energy is greater or less. So it's measured on one uh, dimension. Whereas the area of the animal's freedom is, is two-dimensional. So this becomes a line. In other words, you've seen those pictures of the spectrum with all the lines, those are different amounts of energy. So the variable there is, is, a line, is a single variable, whereas the variable here is two dimensions. Uh, down here, we said there was no freedom. It's, remember, the point was stuck there. <laughs> now this, uh, to fill it in, I have to say that the light, I can't describe its freedom. I just put these lines, meaning 
you think, well, surely there's a diameter there to that circle, but uh, if you were to try to find that edge, no matter how fast you went, how much energy, you'd never get there. Uh, it's going at the speed of light, you see. So if I were to le release a photon from this point at this moment, bing, a second later it's 186,000 miles away in some unknown direction. <laughs> so that's, that's total freedom. 